Georgia recruiting. Specifically, what's up with it? And to remind you about what's supposed to happen, after you win a national championship, especially if you're on a staff like Georgia, which is already known to be one of the most relentless recruiting staffs in America, that follow-up cycle after you win a title, especially if it's the first one you've won in several generations, that's supposed to be the crescendo. That's supposed to be where you just slaughter everything in your path on the recruiting trail. That's how it's supposed to work. But there's a very interesting dynamic that has worked its way into Athens GA right now. There's another phrase, though, that I want you to remember that if you've watched Late Kick or listened to our show for quite a while, you already are familiar with. And that phrase is the consequences of success. We hit that thing a lot, but it's reared its ugly head again. So what's happened? Why am I talking about this? Well, a few hours ago, Justice Hayes committed, not to Georgia, but to Alabama. Who is he? He is a four-star running back out of Buford, home of the Wolves, played him many times in my days at Harris County High School, or as some of you would call it, Harassment County. Not me, but some. Uh, Justice Hayes shocked a lot of people today, quite frankly, committing to Alabama. Let's just go ahead and follow it up, because I know what's coming. Oh, it's only July. Oh, he could always decommit. Okay, got it. We, we, we all understand. We're all adults here. We all understand. Here, here's a bold prediction for you. He's not going to decommit. I'll put that out there, and anyone who wants to challenge that monetarily, see me on the side. So, the news today, Justice Haynes, four-star running back out of Buford, Georgia, commits to Alabama. A lot of folks in Bulldog circles thought they led for him. Not only that, he goes on the record a little bit later today to multiple people saying Ohio State finished runner-up. So make of that what you will. The reason I'm bringing it up is because this is not isolated, this cycle. And unlike some folks who will just sit here and yell about it and say, Kirby sucks, they've let their foot off the gas, yada, 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 it's none of that. There are very specific reasons uh, that I can gather from talking to several people today as to why this may be happening. Now, when I say people, I don't mean Jethro down in Sylvester, who I respect, I love Jethro, but he doesn't really know the inner workings of Georgia recruiting. There are very few people who do. I've reached out to as many people as I could who do have that access and some high school folks around Georgia. So I want to give you a little behind the curtain on what's being said. And it didn't start today, but it kind of had the volume turned up on it today. And let me give you a little backstory before we go down this road. So this was a big surprise, like I said, to a lot of folks. I saw Rusty and Kip over on the Dogs 24-7 board. They were surprised by it. I assume the Georgia staff was surprised by it, although I can't confirm that. But this comes on the heels of a lot of crystal ball attention shifting towards Alabama for Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs is our current 10th rated player in the country. Could change tomorrow. There are a ton of rankings updates. I'm going to tell you about it at the end of the show coming tomorrow. But Caleb Downs is a five-star caliber guy. Uh, he's out of the state of Georgia. And it looks for all the world like Alabama has the momentum in that recruitment right now. Um, Georgia, as far as their 2023 running back recruiting goes, I'll just echo what Rusty said. I don't really particularly know what direction they're going to go. There's another four-star running back out of Florida, kind of in the Fort Myers area, named Richard Young. I think Georgia's on the outside looking in for him after talking to some folks today. Uh, but it is Georgia, and it is July, and it is the running back position. So this alone is not worth, you know, finding the tallest building and yelling, I'll jump on. That's not the point. The point is to draw you back to some of the feedback I got today and to remind you of that phrase, consequences of success. This, this huge misnomer out there is that once a program like Georgia gets to the mountaintop, it's just smooth sailing and the, the seas have parted and it's not going to be easy, but the entire sport is set up for them to dominate. That's not the way this works. It's just, even for Georgia, that's not the way this works. So let me, let me give you a little behind the scenes. Some of the Georgia folks will know this, but I don't think 99% of you do. Kirby Smart and Georgia are so good, they can choose their recruiting strategy. Hardly anyone else has this luxury. They can choose to recruit talent-rich Georgia, or they can choose to go totally national, or they can choose to blend a little bit of both. But when you make that decision, especially if you go the direction Kirby and company have, there will be a price that has to be paid. They've chosen to go national. They recruit Georgia, but you go back and look over the past few cycles. Look at the top 10 players in Georgia. And look at how many of them that are very good, some of them playing on Sundays now are about to be, that they haven't landed. 
Sometimes it's just because a kid wanted to leave. It's a transient state. I get that. I grew up there. But other times, it's because they passed. You want me to illustrate that? Will Anderson should have been a Heisman finalist last year and is probably the best player in college football right now at Alabama. Will Anderson's from Hampton, Georgia. Georgia passed him over. Georgia could have pursued him, and they did not early on in his recruitment. There are several reasons for that, but they didn't. Jordan Battle, starting safety at Alabama, probably also projects as a first-day NFL guy or maybe round-two NFL guy. He's from Tyrone, Georgia. They passed on him. Jameer Gibbs, who went on to start at Georgia Tech and is now going to probably start at running back for Alabama this year. You notice that Alabama theme crossing that Chattahoochee River. Jameer Gibbs, Georgia didn't pursue him. They passed on him. There's a lot of elite talent that they've passed on. Georgia has not hurt in recruiting. I'm not saying shame on Georgia for passing on Will Anderson and then being terrible in recruiting. No, you know as well as I do. Dude. Georgia's been finishing top five every year. Georgia's finished number one a couple of times. There's a price to be paid for the strategy. And this is what a lot of folks back in the state of Georgia are talking about right now. And this is what some of the high school coaches are talking about right now. Some of the handlers which is a word I don't like using a lot because I have to take a shower after I say it. Some of the handlers are talking about this. I'm just being real with you. People see when Georgia chooses to go out of state over very viable in-state kids. Some staffs out there actually take the approach of taking some in-state kids that they don't have evaled quite as high as some out-of-state kids just because they don't want to start that drip, drip, drip that turns into a steady stream one cycle or two cycles down the road. Uh, there may be a kid at Buford one or two cycles ago that you take. That's a fringe take. He's like 24, 25, but you take him because you know you got Haynes down the road. Some staffs choose to do it that way. Kirby and his staff have not. Kirby Smart's one of the best recruiters in America. Total assassin. That's one of the best recruiting operations. They, they're relentless about it. But it's not without potential pitfalls. It's what I'm saying. So that's what's happening with them right now. And that's why you're not seeing that huge tidal wave of recruiting momentum and success thus far in this cycle. Now, make no mistake, uh, what this is not is time to freak out because it's July and they're ranked, I think, sixth right now. So they've got very, very first world problems there, but they're not recruiting the way that I would expect them to. They're not recruiting the way they probably expected to this cycle. I, I, they probably expected to completely and totally knock every domino down they wanted to. It just hasn't happened that way. Uh, they're getting beat. They're getting beat in their own state for some kids. And I don't think it's just because someone dropped the ball this cycle. I don't think it's a case of people dropping the ball at all. I think it's a case of ramifications of a recruiting strategy. Now, I'll also tell you something else. I don't think this is the best recruiting staff Kirby's ever had there, nor the best staff he will have in seasons moving forward. I think you'll see some changes there. You got what you got right now. I'm saying two years from now, I think there will have been significant turnover on this staff. That's happening all the time. The second thing is, I think two years from now, there'll be a different approach to NIL than there is at Georgia right now. I don't think they've been as aggressive on that. I don't think they've been nearly as aggressive on that. Now, the reasons could be multiple in nature, but I think there are some other programs out there far more aggressive on NIL than Georgia. So these are just a couple of things that are being said around the Peach State, driving down there later tonight after the show, that... Um, can probably answer a little bit of your question as to why does Georgia look, eh, not, not, not bad, but they just look a little off right now. Well, that's what's happening. I don't think it's done. I think there are some other big names they're going to miss on. They'll, they'll finish with a very solid class. And I think they'll close really strong. They may end up being top five again. But it's not going to be the kind of class that you would expect following the first championship since the early 80s. That's not probably in the cards this cycle. What I don't know to wrap it up there, what I don't know is what that coaching staff thinks when they look at it. it. Really, Kirby Smart's all I care about. When he looks at what's happening right now, does he think we got some issues or does he think I'm willing to swallow that? I'm doing, I'm doing it the way I want to do it. We, have certain, we just won a national title five minutes ago and we had players from all over America littered all over that roster. So my approach works. I've got proof of production there. It works. If we lose a kid every now and then from this state, even if he goes to Alabama, so be it. I'm not changing my approach. Does he feel that way? Or does he say, I don't like this. Let's take a second look at this. That I can't tell you. Because Kirby Smart's not the kind of guy who shares his uh, philosophical recruiting leanings with very many people.